In this video, we're going to explore the light baking tool at the bottom of the textures menu. When you click on that, you'll see the dialog pop-up that is very similar to the pop-up you may see with ambient occlusion baking or curvature map baking. At the very top here, your light sources options are sphere, hemisphere, or both. The default is sphere. The second option is for your light rendering target. Do you want 3D coat to place it into a new layer and it will name it accordingly? Or do you want to place it into the currently selected paint layer? The map type gives you options for light based curvature maps, thickness maps, light from the render room. This is a direct lighting map, subsurface scattering map, translucency, and also bent normals. When you choose these different options, such as subsurface scattering, you can see your menu changes accordingly. We can change the number of anti-aliasing samples. By default, it's disabled. It has a set amount, but you can increase the anti-aliasing 4 or 16 times. The light intensity is set by default at 100. The light count, 2000. And you can adjust the scattering amount and your colors. You can also bake your luminance to an alpha map and separate to paint objects. Let's look at light from render room. And I'll go ahead and cancel that for now. So this is just going to be a standard light map. But what it's going to do is use your environment light from your HDR map for image-based lighting. And if you happen to add lights here in the render workspace, it will utilize those as well. So for example, if I were to rotate my light here, let's go back to the paint workspace. I'll turn wireframe off by hitting the 4 key. If I've already baked the direct light map and a subsurface scattering map. So let's hide the subsurface scattering layer. I have it reduced down to 75%. And it's in the emissive blending mode. That's how it should be exported to most game engines. Now let's go ahead and hide these other layers. And we'll just look at the subsurface scattering. Take that back down about 70, 75. And then I just put the color layers above that and change the blending mode to something like multiply or soft light. Okay, so let's talk about exporting. If you want to export to a game engine like Unity, for example, if you go to export objects and textures, you'll have this uh, export constructor. You can choose a preset for something like Unity. You'll see an emission map. It will see the layers that are in an emissive blending mode, and it will export those maps out accordingly. You can change the map types to something like PNG. Let me click Cancel. Your direct lighting map, I'll go ahead and unhide that. Okay, and I'm going to hold down the Alt key and click on the visibility icon to isolate just this layer. Okay, and I'm going to go to the Paint Objects panel and hold down the Alt key and click on the visibility icon of the body to isolate it. And go to the View menu and check Flat Shade. So we have no shading in the viewport at all. What we see is the light map that was baked. So let me go to the paint layers panel. I'll hide that and you can see we have no specularity or glossiness or any type of shadowing. Let's turn on the hidden body. So I'll hold down the Alt key to try to unhide everything else. And I'll go back to Paint Objects. Unhide everything here as well. 
I can hit the 5 key instead of going to the view menu again. We'll turn our smooth shading back on. The 2 key is your flat shade. Again, with exporting, 3D Coat will take care of this subsurface scattering layer for us when we choose a preset that has the emissive map. If you want to keep this light map as part of your color or albedo map upon export, then just leave it as it is. But what you could do, if you want to separate it, you can export from the textures menu that particular layer and then hide it when you go to export. And 3D Coat will see that hidden layer as something that you do not want to export. So that's a quick look at using the light baking tool in 3D Coat. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.